Hello everybody, it is me Pacific. Today I wanted to do a video called Born That Way. Yeah, everybody's wondering, why does Pacific look like a dog? Well, because I'm trying to make a point. I believe I was born that way. I really like dogs, so I just tell everybody I was born a dog. And they look at me like I'm half crazed, and I don't understand why. But, just having a little fun here, folks. Let's talk about the gay lifestyle, the alternative lifestyle, same-sex, homosexual lifestyle. Because people say that they're born that way. They cannot help it. We're going to have a rational discussion here, folks. We're going to talk about some controversy. And if you don't like the heat, I would warn you, get out of the kitchen. I'm going to say some things that are not going to set well with the belief that the gay lifestyle, people are born that way. Number one. I'm going to tell you that because of my Christian views, I believe homosexuality is wrong. Number two, because of some roads that I have gone down, or rather things that people have introduced me to, I am not unfamiliar with the gay lifestyle. I'm going to be very candid about some things, and I'm going to be very direct about some things. But let's start with this one. Let's give the homosexual community some wide latitude on this issue, and let's talk about... Are they really born that way? In the United States, we have laws of the land. Laws against speeding. Laws against theft. Laws against pedophilia. Laws against racketeering. Ponzi schemes. Ripping people off. You know, we, there's consequences for those things. For a long time, there were laws on the books against homosexual behavior. People called it sodomy. Named it different things. I want to say something, viewers, and this is where it's at. If a homosexual is born homosexual, then so is a thief, so is a pedophile, so is one who breaks the speed limit, doesn't use their turn signals, or make a complete stop at the stop sign. Nobody can help themselves. So therefore, all behaviors out there that we don't agree with, we need to stop condemning people because, after all, they're all born that way. Now, now let's stop right there. A little rewind is in order. I'm a Christian, and because of my Christian beliefs, the Bible says in Adam, all sin, in Christ, all live, or in Adam, all die. We are born from Adam, and because we're born from Adam, we have a sinful nature. Now, this is for Christians only. For those of you that don't believe in the Christian faith, just bear with me here. The Bible teaches that we are all sinners. It also says in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, I believe, that sin is pleasurable for a season. <clears throat> Christians make a big mistake by saying, oh, that guy's so miserable, he lives in sin. Hey, I know a lot of people that are quite happy to do the sins they're doing. I'm a Christian, and I've sinned, and sometimes i found it rather delightful. Sometimes sin just flat out feels good. But I don't believe a person is born homosexual. In, in the sense that they cannot help it. Can we all live one day without sinning in thought, word, or deed? No. Are we born into sin? Yes. But if we're going to say that homosexuality is okay because they're born that way, then we need to let the pedophiles go. The guy that just stole and carjacked your car, let him go. And all the people that drive breaking the laws behind the wheel in their vehicle, we shouldn't ticket them. After all, they were born that way. They can't help it, right? If that is our framework for setting up any society, it will ultimately fail. Think about it, folks. If we're going to legitimize this lifestyle, then why can't we legitimize something else? Let me take this a step further. Teenage girls are quite good looking these days. Why is it adults cannot have sex with them? I'm saying that because most of you parents out there would go, Oh my gosh, come on, Pacific. But I'm making a point. Laws are designed to protect... Laws are based in a Judeo-Christian ethic. Sorry, I've done my study of American history, and a lot of those founding fathers did put a pretty heavy emphasis on God, the God of the Bible, to be specific. And there's all the naysayers out there that want to say we're not a Christian nation. That is true. That is absolutely correct. But did the founding fathers make reference to the Almighty God, the God of Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ being God, and that the Bible was to be revered and valued? Yes, they did. 
Were some of them not necessarily God-fearing? That's correct. But American culture is drenched with Judeo-Christian beliefs and laws and stuff like that. Let's talk about homosexuality. I think I've said this in other videos. Years ago, a man started touching me. It was a lonely night somewhere. I went down to a park. This stuff wasn't even on my mind. I had actually uh, gone to coffee with a female friend of mine, and I had had a hard time getting girlfriends. That town I had just moved to, way up north, Minnesota, kind of a depressing environment. And a guy started touching me, and normally I would have been repulsed and would have said, hey, you know, what's this? Let me say something from Pacific's point of view. I liked the touch, even though the whole thing at first kind of freaked me out. This idea of homosexuals getting into anal sex, you know, being male up another guy's rumpus, I don't understand that stuff. To me, it is revolting and disgusting. I do understand the power of touch. I understand that when you've been put down all your life and people have made fun of you and white women in our culture, which are really good at being picky, high maintenance, entitlement, and snobby to most American males today, it would be very easy for somebody to be pushed in a direction. Now, though I like the touch, I did not look at a man and go, wow, I'd like to go out with him. Did not. I don't find a man's hairy armpits and a man's package between his legs attractive. I find it disgusting. I don't like the smell of males. I don't like the looks of most males. Personally, I think most males need to get a grip in the department of hygiene and taking care of themselves. But that's just my opinion. For all the comments I get about my thick glasses and stuff, I don't know. When I look in the mirror and I take my shirt off, I think, for 46, I'm doing pretty dang good. Small build guy. My muscles are still tight. I'm in good shape. I can get up and I can blast out a job fast. My dad in his 40s, the one who adopted me, was quite overweight had labored breathing, tired out very easily, and at my age now, I can run circles around him when he was in his 40s, hands down. I'm very happy with what God has given me. Back to the issue of homosexuality. I was introduced to some, uh, how do I say it, initiation into some of that stuff. I have had men ask me if they could do me anally, and I said, no, thank you. I let guys touch me, touch my chest, feel me. I experimented a little bit. But all in all, I determined that's not for me. Now, viewers might say, well, well, you're a hypocrite then. How can you put this down? Wait a minute. I wasn't looking for that. I wasn't born that way. It was about touch. It was about stimulation. Why am I being very candid in this video? Because I wasn't out there looking for this. And I'm going somewhere, folks, so sit back. Most people that involve themselves in the homosexual lifestyle have been introduced to it by somebody else, usually an older male. I found when I was on Yahoo Messenger, I was shocked and appalled at the number of married 50, 60-year-old men wanting to get on cam and look at another man and masturbate on cam together. It is rampant, folks. It is rampant. Started asking myself, why is this? Do these men really feel attracted to another man? I started deducing something. A lot of men are in bad marriages. And because of the church's heavy condemnation of divorce and sexual immorality, what has happened is many people think, well, it's better to masturbate with another guy than to go off and have an affair, really get into trouble, lose my marriage, whatever. The same thing is also happening to females. In fact, I find that lesbian behavior is exploding in our culture. And I'm going to get into that. And ladies, you're not going to like what I have to say. But American women have been groomed for a long time to be very self-centered. The commercials all cater to them. And the commercials are all catering to everybody's ego now. But women, it has always been front and center stage. Got to have the makeup. Got to have the look got to go to the shop, got to buy it for less at Ross, blah, blah, blah. Let me say something, folks. When we live in a self-centered culture, 
when we live in a narcissistic culture, narcissistic, excuse me, when we look at women going into the bathrooms and comparing themselves with other women, I don't find males doing that. Now, I understand that men and women are different. I dated a woman years ago who decided to make her hairstyle in a beehive style. It didn't fit the 1980s. People laughed at her from all avenues of life. We were in a store one day. She had put so much hairspray to poof this hair up that it had dried into plastic globules all over her hair. It was pathetic. And one day she didn't do it right and the whole thing leaned over and it was just hideous. I'm in the store and I hear some woman say, oh my gosh, look at that chick's hair. That is so freaking freaky. Well, the girl I was with heard it. She immediately reacted and I said, you know, I told her later, I said, you know, you might want to start looking at this. She was convinced that this hairstyle was so cool, even though everybody just thought it was off the wall disgusting. The fact is, she didn't want to do anything to please her man. Um, I believe I have some taste. There were some older pictures of her with very long hair parted in the middle. It was old-fashioned, but I thought, my gosh, she looks so different with that. So cute. So ladylike. My point is, I don't know too many women in our culture that want to be pleasing to their boyfriend, their man. And I'm going to say something, folks. When women become as self-centered as they do, and I see it on the school bus every day, 13, 12, 13 year old girls that think that they're just so cute and such enamored with the princess syndrome because their dad has always called them princess. They won't even say hello, please, or thank you. And then when I got to make an announcement to the bus, they're the ones in the back that think I can't hear them to make the snotty, smart, you know what, remark. And I think, where does all this come from? We buy them phones. We buy them stuff. They sit on their velvet pillows at home. They've never worked a hard day in their life. And they've become way too big for their tiny little britches. No wonder women suddenly are getting interested in other females. After all, they're trying to compare themselves with other females. They look at each other's breasts. They look at each other, wow, you're so pretty. And it's only a matter of time. When you become so narcissistic, you start becoming in love with yourself. So then it would make sense for you to want another female. Now, you might object and say, oh, no, it happened to me because I had a jerk male. One jerk male. And now you're lesbian. Let me tell you something, females. I grew up with a domineering, abusive mother. I've had a couple of marriages that have failed flat on their face. Am I perfect? No. But let me say something. I did the best I could with those females. It wasn't enough. They were selfish. They were narcissistic. They couldn't take criticism. And I was always the bad guy. Never them. Never heard the words, I am sorry. And I see it out in public all day long. I watch women drive. They're not paying attention to what they're doing. They cut somebody off. They almost cause an accident. And somebody taps a horn and they're ready to fight. Ready to stand up for their rights. Yell and scream, F you. Wow, what a lady. What does this have to do with homosexuality? It has everything in the world to do with it. When you become so self-centered, pretty soon you only want somebody that's kind of like you. Meaning, hmm, you know, maybe I just want to feel another woman. This whole movement that I don't need men is diabolical. It is immature. It is detrimental to our society. Do men have their problems? You better believe it. But I've met a lot of redneck men that drive pickup trucks that one would think are not even close to being gay, but yet they've desired another man touching them or watching them or mutual masturbation. And I've thought, what in the world is going on? And I finally figured out some of it, like I said in the video, women are responsible for this. I believe a lot of women are responsible for pushing men also into the alternative lifestyle. And most of the men that I've met that were candid enough to tell me about their struggles with this issue said, I don't want a man. I want a girlfriend. I do this because I get so horny and it's a release. Yeah. Men are born with a sex drive. So are women. Some women masturbate, some don't. I know many that masturbate several times a day. So we got a broad range of spectrum. I have grew up with women in my past. My mother was one who we kids always wondered if she ever, well, obviously she had had 
sex, but some women don't need it, don't want it, and they're very cold and cool towards their male. I watched this in my home with the parents that adopted me. Dad would try to hug my mother and she would shove him away. It was pretty sad as a kid watching that kind of thing go on. And then the holidays would come around and she'd pretend that they were just such a happily married couple and they're still doing that to this day. Pretty sad stop. Pacific is not gay viewers. I hate to inform you of that, but I'm not. I love women. Look at my little icon on Pacific Ocean Asia. It's an Asian woman with her arm up and her beautiful long hair and two doves bringing her jewelry. You know what? I am fascinated by females. I am fascinated by couples who actually love each other. Not materialistically splurge and wear matching outfits and, you know, the cult. Look at us in our SUV and our cute little doggy, sorry, woof woof. I like couples that are in love and when they're in their 60s, they're still holding hands. And he reaches over and says, here, I, I bought some pastry. You want some pastry, honey? Oh, thank you. You know, I love that sweetness. No, gays are not born that way. It's a choice. There's many factors that contribute to it. Let's start with the basic one of my Christian beliefs. Conditioned response. You have bad experiences. You have a domineering mother or an absentee father or a father who's passive or a father who doesn't love you. And a lot of women also turn into lesbians because of bad fathers. This has all been factually proved over and over again that the family structure is more important than modern Americans want to believe and when the family's jacked up, it stands to reason that the kids will become jacked up too, including entering alternative lifestyles, experimentation with all kinds of weird deviant sexual behavior. Now you have couples on Craigslist wanting other couples in the bedroom, wanting another girl in the bedroom so that the husband can watch the two women going at it. <clears throat> we have truly descended into a pit from which we cannot extricate ourselves. Sin is desirable. Somebody experiences touch, they equate it with love. I'm going to say something to the homosexual community. I'm tired of people redefining love and saying that same sex is love. No, it's lust, it's infatuation, it's, it is an aberration, it is a, it is a problematic symptom of a society that has become so cold, jaded, and calloused, and unloving that you wrongly think that that female that's sleeping next to you, that you're truly in love with each other. You don't know what love is. Can I love a man as a brother, as a friend? Yes. But when we get into homosexual love, it is not love in my opinion. And I know people will object to me. I do not believe in gay marriage. I believe that to encourage that is anything but productive for any society. The problem in America is everybody wants to do what they want. They think freedom means they have the right to do whatever they want. But if you tell the same homosexuals that, okay, let me go in your house and steal that flat screen TV, they go, that's wrong. Well, why? I was born that way. I can't afford it. Why should you have it? And I can't enjoy it. The problem in our society is people don't agree with certain rules because they cramp their style, so we're going to legitimize it. We're going to have gay pride parades, and we're going to scream and yell and stamp our feet till we get our way. But we'll stand up together and say that pedophiles wrong and discrimination is wrong, and yet I have worked in workplaces where gays were promoted to levels of authority who were not doing a good job. I saw this at a bus company in Spokane. One was a dispatcher, and you know what? The guy was worthless in people skills. He was a horrible employee. And yet, was anything done about this behavior? No. He was favored because he was in the gay lifestyle. It's interesting, but if we let the gays have their way, I don't know how many of them are going to hire and promote straight people within their organization. Unless, of course, they think they have a chance at converting him over to their twisted ideology. I have seen enough, folks. I have seen enough. If certain minorities were in charge in the United States, and there are certain minorities in the U.S. that do not hire white people at all, we're going to leave the name of the ethnicity out. They want equal rights, they want affirmative action, and they want to scream and yell about us white people, but I don't see them hiring in the locale of the country that they are the greatest in number. They don't hire us for their stores, shops, businesses. Discrimination? I think so. Homosexuality is wrong. 
From a Christian standpoint, it is wrong from a natural standpoint. When our nation descends into this, the clock starts ticking. Now, is homosexuality a worse sin than all the other sins that go on? By no means. A lot of Christians can be some horrible, yucky, hypocritical acting people. They can be unloving and kind, and yet they go to church, they wear their Sunday best, and they think that because they do that and they give a percentage of their money and they play the little church game that they're better human beings. Baloney. I go to church every Sunday and I see fakes and frauds and pretenders and game players and people that are more plastic than the toys made in a Chinese toy factory. It is revolting. Homosexuality is a choice. Just as much as pedophilia is a choice. When I see people get in their car and break the speed limit, that is a choice. You have the ability to stop the behavior. You have the ability to change the behavior. And we all have the ability to take accountability for our actions. And it's pretty sick in American society when a minority of people think that it's okay to change all of the rules and laws to allow them to continue in this ridiculous lifestyle. Go to any gay pride parade and tell me what you see. I find it revolting. People parading shamelessly, their nudity and kissing in public and all this. Do you guys want children seeing this? Well, some of them are so jaded and calloused, of course they do. I was at a gay pride rally. Actually, it was a family rally in Colorado some years ago. I, Because it was a family-oriented ministry, I was going down there for my presence to be known that I was not in favor of gay marriage. I wasn't there to jump up and down and scream and yell. Well, inadvertently, I'd brought my son because many had brought their children. I had never done this, so I was quite naive. And I happened to end up standing. There were so many people, I didn't realize that I was standing by where all the gays were standing. I could not believe the things that were coming out of their mouth, the profanity uh, the, the sexually laced conversations that they were yelling and screaming at the speakers that would get up. They were not allowing them the right to be heard, shouting them down, screaming and yelling. I looked at my son and I said, son, you see these people standing around us? They are not conducting themselves with any class whatsoever. Well, several of them suddenly looked at me and I said, regardless of what one believes, The proof is in the pudding that these guys are wrong just by the very way that they're acting. I found it disgusting that they would even start yelling the kind of comments they were yelling in front of children. And it was funny. I had a hard time explaining to people when the camera panned around and people that know me said, what in the world is Pacific doing on the gay side? I had no idea that I was over on that side. I couldn't even get out until the crowd dispersed. I thought, I will never take my son to one of those again. I've had many friends that were in the gay and lesbian lifestyle. So let's talk about the word that the gays use because I don't agree with their lifestyle. They they immediately throw into the air the word homophobic. Phobic means fearful. And I'm going to tell you, I have no reason to be afraid of gays. I look them right in the eye and say, good morning, how are you today? I'm surrounded with gays and lesbians at my job. They're amongst us everywhere we go, from small town to large city to foreign shores. I'm not afraid of them. I have no reason to be. They're people just like me. They're really no different than me. They're broken, just like we all are. They have their issues, just like we all do. They gotta work. They have hopes and dreams. Their view has been twisted. Conditioned response. I heard people tell me for years, Pacific, you got to drink beer. I said, I don't like the stuff. Well, you got to acquire a taste for it. You know how you acquire a taste for something? Keep doing it over and over and over. I've noticed songs that I didn't like. If I heard them long enough, in time, I'd start to like them. It's kind of funny. When something is all you know, you can get yourself used to liking it. Born that way? No. Can we be conditioned, massaged, and groomed? You bet. When a young woman is coming on to another woman, wow, your hair's so pretty, you look so nice, she befriends that woman. 
and then she finds out that woman's parents are rejecting towards her, unkind, that all this, and that girl starts moving in for the kill. I've seen it a lot. And lo and behold, they induct somebody into the lesbian lifestyle. I have found lesbian women to be very aggressive about pushing people into that direction. And I have found them to be very man-hating, many of them. We have to get at something here. The hypocrisy of the lesbian community is revolting in this. They are being hypocritical when they hate us males, when the very reason that they're here speaking such venomous hatred is because of the male's semen. Hello? It was a male that brought you here. Are you forgetting that? I see couples advertising in forums all the time wanting a male to donate his sperm so that this couple can have a baby. If you don't need us men, then what do you need our semen for? I can prove to you by looking at the shape of a penis and the shape of a vagina and the breasts that give milk that there's a natural flow of things that proves that male and female belong together and all the other stuff is simply deviant behavior. But in America, we don't want to hear that. We just don't want to be told that our lifestyle is wrong. Let me give you an example. I drive for a living, and I've gone to work in factories, and I've gone to work in call centers, and I've overheard conversations. People said, oh, the effing cop pulled me over and gave me a ticket. They blame the cop. It's the cop's fault. Well, what were you doing? Well, I was going 80. I go 80 all the time, but these cops have nothing better to do. And it's all about quota and the cop's unjust. And I keep my mouth shut because the guy is so hot and so stupid that he fails to realize, hey, dude, if you weren't speeding, you wouldn't have gotten a ticket. You had the ability to make the choice. Gays want to scream and yell for acceptance. I'm sorry, homosexual community. Don't expect us to roll over Beethoven and say, okay, yeah, it's okay to be gay. If you're doing something that's wrong, there's still enough of us that don't believe that it is right, and we're going to stand against it properly. I don't believe in harassing gays. I don't believe in discriminating against them, but I also don't believe in giving them special favors, just like I wouldn't give a pedophile special favors. You don't put a pedophile in charge of children. You don't put a thief in a bank. And I certainly don't want homosexual people in charge of our children. Promoting and encouraging a lifestyle that is destructive for any nation. If everybody became homosexual, there would be no children, no family. The structure falls flat on its face. But they don't want to think about that. I've said enough about this issue. No, gays are not born that way. It's a lifestyle choice. Just like things that I do, habitual practices that we all practice. We don't stop and analyze why we're doing it. We have some pretty good arguments for why we're doing it. And when we don't like being convicted or told that our lifestyle is sinful in the eyes of God, we quickly hug the evolution tree and say, well, I don't believe in God. And I have a message for all of those that want to think that their belief or their lifestyle is right. When you die, you will find out immediately if you were right or wrong. But that is a fact that also applies to Pacific. Anybody can have confidence in what they believe in this life. They can put up a good act and they can buffalo and deceive themselves into believing anything they want. People do it all the time. Their compass doesn't say north, but they can truly believe that their compass does say north when it's pointing east. When you die, you'll know the truth. Guaranteed. If there's no uh, afterlife, well, you'll just die. If there is an afterlife, you're going to find out which side of the fence of the afterlife you're on. Eternal hell or eternal life. You'll know immediately. And then it'll be too late. Pacific has done his share of sinning, but I never tell everybody that I was born that way. I was born a sinner, yes, but I never tell anybody that I was born 
to be uh, to, to engage in certain behaviors. If we were born that way, then why could God send anybody to hell? But he sent his son as a sacrifice for our sins. And for those that actually believe in God, you have to start looking at why did he send a sacrifice? Because he knows we screw up. And for those that are atheists and don't believe in what I have to say, I respect you for watching. Many of you have commented to me you like a lot of my videos. I want to tell you thank you. I'm respectful to people, whether they agree with me or not. If I can have a forum where people of opposing viewpoints can actually listen to me, I consider myself farther ahead than those obnoxious people that are so offensive and atrocious that dissenting views won't even listen to what they have to say. I would rather have an audience and stimulate thought. And I've even had some people saying, though I don't agree with everything in your videos, you do make some good points. This is not an attack on the gay community. I just admitted my own involvement with some things. Yes, I let men touch me, feel me. Sometimes it was fun because of how low I had been brought in my life. Somebody admired me. Somebody made me feel good. But no, Pacific loves women. And I want a woman. I don't want to come home to a male and say, Hi, honey, I'm home. It just isn't my thing. I understand why people do what they do. But born that way? Nah. This is Pacific signing off. I think I've said enough on the issue. And uh, sorry for the little dog picture. I was just kind of trying to make a point. These things are kind of cheesy, but this dog's kind of cute. Just want to reach out and pet it. Oh, okay. Bye-bye.